What is up everybody and welcome back to Mount Mograph and Summit 38. Um, we're going to be making an animated map fold today. Also happy Friday and uh, other stuff like that. This video is going to be kind of cool. I actually saw this effect in a similar video uh, and I liked it so I tried to make it. I made it and it really wasn't too hard but it was totally cool. So I thought I'd share it with you guys and uh, yeah enjoy. <music> All right, so that's basically it. As you can see, we get uh, some content that comes on the screen. Uh, you can animate whatever the heck you want on here. And this is all done in After Effects, by the way, so that's a cool part. And then as it folds up, um, it's actually very subtle, um, but you get shadows over the different planes. Um, and that's what gives it the depth. And I'll show you how to make that. Um, using some lights in After Effects um, in a nice easy way and yeah I just added a, a little boat on here to move because it was easy um, and I didn't want to do anything too complex and then your content actually opens to more content so I'll show you how to set all that up it's pretty easy and it's pretty fun uh, so we're gonna go make that today so I'm gonna just open up Illustrator to start and do command N for a new composition 1920 by 1080 as usual go up into my file my color mode and set that to RGB um, because for some reason Illustrator will not save mine as RGB because that's what I always use and then I'm gonna turn off my stroke because everyone hates the stroke and we are just going to start by making a wonderful video uh, so what I'm gonna do actually is find a color scheme I like so I will just first find a nice base color I like this green I'm gonna work with that and uh, let's go into our pentagram oh I like this color scheme so I actually have started doing this shift command 4 to uh, screenshot something and just take a screenshot of this color because every time you grab a different one it sets your base color to something else and your color scheme changes so uh, I just take a screenshot now just to keep it nice and consistent and uh, now I don't have to worry about this thing changing I can actually forget about it so yeah that's a nice little thing if you guys haven't gotten around to doing that um, I think it's a nice way to kind of hack the color system that totally tries to mess up your designs so anyway I will lock this color layer so we can't mess with it anymore no matter how hard we try I cannot click it that is so sad um, and so let's just start by creating our uh, little map background so I'm just going to select this uh, nice beige color and center this in the middle of my artboard like that and call this layer map background boom that is done uh, we're gonna go ahead and create another new layer and uh, this one we are going to uh, I was actually just kidding grab this uh, map background layer do command C and lock that layer and do command F uh, on your new layer to paste it into place and command F one more time and let's just scale this layer down a little bit grab both those layers and minus the front and uh, then just grab a different color like that and we now have a nice border so I'm gonna call this border and that is the border to our map so I'll lock that layer and create another new layer and this is probably going to be our water so I'll just grab a rectangle and just draw some water here and uh, make sure your border is actually above this layer um, so it's kind of just like the easy way to cut stuff um, without having to like line things up perfectly that is a wonderful blue so I'll lock that layer and call this water and create another new layer let's create our islands so I'm just going to go up to my rounded rectangles and grab a nice green color like this one right here grab your rounded rectangle and just click pretty randomly to create a, a epic island um, in that nice kind of modern design style uh, this style is actually pretty cool um, I don't know what they call it it's like Netherland design or something I don't know what the heck it is but it's kind of like simple geometric shapes um, with like two-tone shading and I've actually grown to like it so uh, yeah I think it's pretty cool I don't know how long this trend will be around but well it is I am happy with it so I'm gonna unite this and then do command C and command F to paste it in place press up three times or four times maybe even five if you're crazy and go to the left three or four times as well and click that bottom layer and just grab a darker green and we now have an awesome little drop shadow looking thing um, beneath our island so I'm gonna call this layer island because that would make some sense 
and lock this layer. Uh, next, let's create uh, something on the map uh, that we can look at. So I'm going to go ahead and create a little pool of water and some mountains. Uh, so I'll create a new layer and just make a little circle here and maybe grab our nice uh, blue color. Actually, I should grab a different blue color, so like this dark one. Do Command C and Command F twice, um, which is a nice trick. And then I'll just move my uh, one of my my top layer over here. So I pasted that in place twice and grab the top two layers. If I can click them, I might have to zoom in. Grab my top two layers here and just do the minus front. And now I get a nice little crescent cutout. And then I can just pick a different color. And now it looks like we have a pool, even though that top color is wrong. So now it looks like we kind of have a, like a 3D looking pool. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't, but whatever. So now I'm going to make uh, some mountains. So I'll just hold shift and draw a rectangle. Rotate my rectangle. Um, grab this middle point, pull it up. And uh, maybe pick some nice brown colors. So check that out. That is so nice. I'll just create a couple different mountains here with different colors. Uh, that was the same color as before. And maybe one other color because we are so crazy. Um, so not nice. Now we have some nice uh, random mountains. Actually, I'm going to move this pool because it is just in the way. Uh, so my mountains, look at that. I am like a... Uh, an awesome person. I can just move mountains and uh, entire lakes. No one would believe me unless they were watching this video. Uh, so now I will just uh, scale up these mountains till I get a moderately interesting design. We're not going for anything too crazy or cool today. Um, at least for this portion. This is just a basic illustration. Uh, so, boom, this is looking so good. Copy this one and put this back here. Whoa. Get back over there, guy. Uh, and then just make this one taller for some contrast and send that to the back. Boom, we have some mountains that look just so good. Um, and now what we're going to probably want to do is uh, do that little two-tone stuff that is very popular in um, like the design style I was talking to you about. And how you do that is about as easy as things can be. We're just going to grab a layer, do Command-C to copy it, and press Command-F twice to paste it in place twice. Drag the layer over a little bit like this and grab the layer beneath it and minus the front so it actually cuts off that piece there. And then just pick a white color, go over into your transparency window and set it to a lighten effect. And then just turn your opacity down to like 12. And so now we're going to have a nice little two-tone shadow. And you can do this to everything. So I'm going to do Command-C on this and Command-F twice. Move this layer like that and minus the front. And then make this one. Um, just use my eyedropper tool to grab that 10% opacity guy. And then just do this for all these layers. And uh, I'll get a nice effect in no time. That totally looks like I spent some time making this. And as usual, this is Mount MoGraph tips to making stuff look okay in no time at all. Uh, and I'm only saying okay because it never turns out awesome when I make these videos. Uh, or maybe it does. I don't know. Leave me a like or drop me a comment. <laughs> that was such perfect timing. I don't know if I have a career in comedy, but I'm not even thinking about it. So I guess that is a good thing. All right. So now I got this uh, lake and mountain set up. I'm just going to call this content one. I don't know why, but I felt like it. So I'll lock this layer and create one more new layer. And this is going to be for some wonderful trees. So uh, let's just get in on here and uh, make some trees. I'll do something like that and uh, something like this for a little branch that sticks out. Grab those layers, unite those layers, press Command C and Command F twice and just move these layers over like this, minus the front. And I'll just pick a different color for now. So that's how you can get some kind of cool like fake shadows. Um, and then let's just grab some nice brown colors for this uh, incredible tree that we made. Uh, all right. So that looks bad, which is not what we're going for. And that is the same color. So that was a very bad mess up. And then there we go. We have a nice tree. Um, I should probably make some little little guys on the top up here. So I'll make a giant giant tree like that and grab an, a green and then just duplicate this one and scale this down and uh, make this one also green. So now we have a wonderful tree uh, that looks so good as usual. Uh, and I'll scale this guy down quite a bit. Um, I actually made the top of this tree the same color as my grass, so that's not cool. Uh, there we go. Um, I just switched that. And then I'm just going to copy this all over my map. Um, 
just because people probably need to see this tree because it looks so good. So put this everywhere you possibly can on the map. Um, I'm just holding alt and clicking and dragging um, and that will paste it all over the place. And uh, just put this everywhere. Uh, you don't have to be shy. People love these trees. They tell me all the time um, that these are the best trees they've ever seen. And if they ever owned an island with a lake and a mountain, they would want these trees all over their island. So that is a lie, but you know, it does look all right. So now we got this weird island full of these little weird trees. So now we probably need a weird boat coming to visit this weird island. So I'm going to call this layer trees, lock that layer, create a new layer, come up here for my boat button. It's actually a rectangle tool. Um, and uh, then just make a little boat. So just move your anchor points in, maybe squash this dude, um, grab a red color for some sweet boat action and uh, just Maybe do a little line here for some color contrast. Um, maybe I'm going to make this a nice purple boat. Um, it is the party barge. So now I got that going and I'll drag um, a little circle and we'll make some windows for this party barge because these people need to see what the heck they're going to visit. This is like an Alice in Wonderland uh, map. Um, so that is so cool. So now I have that wonderful little guy. Um, we probably need a little hut or something on here for people to hang out and party in before they get to this party party world or whatever the heck it is um so this looks really bad but it's pretty funny actually it's not funny i haven't even laughed at it it's just that bad so now we got a boat i'm gonna group this guy together and i'm gonna call this layer boat um so this is so good i'm gonna save this to my desktop as uh what should i call this map graphic one and save that and press enter boom we got this wonderful uh scene coming together for us so uh, now what i'm going to do is just unlock all these layers um and just grab everything do shift command s and i'm going to call this one map cuts um and just press enter grab everything that we just made and delete it but remember we did save it so there's no worries unclick my uh lock the map background layer grab this uh map background go up here to object go to path and go to this wonderful effect called split into grid and we're going to set our columns to five because that's the number i want and now we have these things separated into five equal segments that's a really fun great tool for stuff if you haven't used it before let's release these layers to a sequence and drag these out and then just delete all this crap we don't need and then just name these layers in order from left to right uh, so that's three this should be four and if I did this right this last one is going to be on the far right and it is so this is set up correctly these are our map cuts um, so now I'm gonna do shift command s and I'm gonna call this um, map graphics 2 and uh, just because I made this already, I know where I want the next graphics to be. So I'm going to delete this one here, delete this one here, and now go to my file, open recent, and let's bring back our map graphic one that looked so good. So there this dude is. Uh, let's unclick our uh, content one. So that's our little map and uh, other thing here. Command C, come back over here, do command V and paste this here. And I'm just gonna make like a little scene so we have some extra content to flip to and why not look at something like that. So uh, let me lock this and then I'll go to my trees and just grab one tree, command C, come back here, paste this tree in here, uh, just wherever you want. And uh, once again, just hold alt and drag this around for some interest and maybe even scale it up because like I said, people love these trees. So this is just, I'm gonna start putting this in all my work just so people are really impressed. Um, and now I just need to make this background color a uh, green. Uh, so there we go, we got our original scene back. Um, kind of, it's like, I, I figured it was like taking a picture, like you were going into the scene and then, I, I don't know. Yeah, so we have that going. Um, let's just create some text real quick. So I'm gonna just type in, welcome to party land because this is party land uh it's the map to party land uh i should probably spell this right so welcome to party land awesome and then i'll grab a font i'm gonna do blanche uh which is a fun font and then i'll just scale this up a little bit go to object or click off my type select my type go to type create outlines um and then just shift command G and uh, 
make my welcome the same size as my party land like that. So it looks like I totally planned making this uh, little flyer for party land. Command G to group them and then I will just pick a super fun color like this white and put this in the corner for this graphic. So welcome to party land. Uh, yeah, let's go make this. So I will just uh, delete this color here and command s to save it and we are so good we got all our layers check your wherever you saved them that you have three different files just like this and now we're going to go into after effects and really get started in this wonderful project so i'm going to do command i on my keyboard to import and i want to import my map cuts first import as composition retain layer sizes say open uh, double click into your map cuts um, and there we go, we have this map cut. So I'm gonna do Command Y to create a solid in the background. I'm gonna call this BG for background, drag my solid to the back of everything and lock it so I can't click it and mess around with it even though I'd like to. Um, and now I need to delete this color layer because I don't really need to see it. So I'm gonna just delete that color layer. So we just have our one, two, three, four, five uh, guys here. So what I'm going to do is make sure you have this move anchor point script um, and this is going to make your life way easier. If you don't, you can just press Y for your move anchor point tool and move it wherever you want. But the move anchor point script is better. It's in the video description if you'd like to download it. So we'll be using that and the ease and whiz script, which is also in the video description if you'd like to download it today. Um, and they're both free if you want. You should pay for this one, but you don't have to. And that's my spiel for today. So I'm just going to select this layer here and click uh, right here on my move anchor point script. So my anchor point will jump over to this side exactly. And then I'm going to parent that object to our second object, which is the, the one right here. Um, and why we're doing that is so now if I rotate this one the other one will rotate which is the trick so let's take this one and uh, put our move anchor point over onto this side so it'll be able to bend there and that's good so let's go over to five and put our move anchor point over onto the left side here and parent this one to the ne the one next to it so four put the anchor point over here for four and parent this one to three and three is right here so let's put a uh, move anchor point right here and uh, that is great. So this is set up, but now our two and three don't have a parent. So what we're going to do is just do shift alt command Y and create a null. Uh, put my move anchor point in the middle of the null and just press P on my keyboard on three or two to bring up my position properties and just do command C with a position selected. Go over into my null and press P to bring up my position and command V to paste my position and now it's right where I need it to be. It's right where my anchor point is for my other object. So I'm going to call this uh, layer control. Boom, that was easy. So let's put our two and three. Uh, we're gonna parent these to our layer control with our pick whip and that's all set up. So I'm going to now uh, just go forward in time to about one second and grab all these layers and press R on my keyboard. Actually, I should make them all 3D first. So click 3D for all of them and then just go and set a keyframe for your Y orientation for all of them and press U on your keyboard. And that is fantastic. Also on your layer, just do shift P to also bring up your position properties, set a keyframe on your position and we are so good. So now what we're going to do is go up into our little menu bar here and go over to our view and set it to top. Um, and this is like the top of our thing. And since it's just very thin, you only see this dotted line, but that's all you need to see. So now what we're going to do is just go forward in time to maybe, uh, let's call it, uh, let's go to four seconds, I guess, and just uh, set a keyframe on all these properties again. So um, everything and just set another keyframe on your rotation and another one on your position and that's great. And then we'll go forward again to about seven seconds and uh, get that cool bend together. So I'm going to grab my uh, my third one and uh, just with my Y rotation, just turn this guy in uh, to maybe 87 degrees and then I'll turn, turn my two into... Um, yeah, like whatever this would be, negative 90 degrees. And then since this is a parent of it, it's also turned. So I will just set this one back to kind of make like a crinkle effect, like a crinkle French fry to plus 177. I will set this one. I'll just rotate it back till it looks good. Um, you can just kind of eyeball it. Um, there's no like exact number that you need to do. Um, like this. And so now if I go back into my active camera view, 
uh, we can see that it now crinkles together and that was pretty easy, right? So we have this cool little crinkle, which looks good. So I'm gonna select all of these uh, little keyframes here and go to my easing and just set it to uh, quad in and out and set apply. And that's just gonna give it a nice little movement that's nice and smooth for us. You don't have to do that, but now it just has a little bit more excitement. So boom, that looks great. And uh, now what we're gonna wanna do is actually rotate this as well as it's turning. So I'm gonna go and move my keyframe for my layer control to about halfway through that transition. And then as this uh, layer control is over here, I'm gonna just rotate this uh, to negative, uh, let's call it negative uh, 82 degrees. So now it's going to turn like this and fold together. So that looks awesome. So now with that set up, we uh, still, we can see it's like fake 3D, like it looks 2D and it kind of does some cool stuff, but we're not seeing that shadow. So how we're gonna do this is right click and go to new and click a light. So let's set our light type to a parallel and you can just do the color of white, um, set your intensity to 82 for now. Um, actually, do we want spot? I don't remember which one we want. Let's try parallel first. So I'll say, okay. And I think we did want parallel. So let's go into our active, our little view here and go to custom view one. And we're just going to tilt this. Yeah. So actually on your, with your light layer selected, do shift command Y on your keyboard to bring up your light settings again, go to light type and set it to spot and then say, okay. So now we can get this nice vignette. So I'm going to just move this uh, light over to the side over here. So about here and then move this little dot um, over to the middle like this. So you're getting a nice ring on everything. And I might even, um, is that what I want? I really don't remember right now. Uh, so, oh yeah, that is what I want. So now as you can see, when it closes, we kind of have, um, these darker areas on it. So that kind of works, but what we're going to do is go back into our active camera. And as you can see, this looks cool. Like we have some nice shadow on there, but it doesn't really look good. It looks totally crappy. So let's make another light. Um, just right click, go to new and select light. And we're going to make an ambient light, which will put light on everywhere in the scene. So I'm going to say, okay. And now it's going to be way too bright. So let's actually go into our light uh, one here, which I'm going to call my shadow caster light. So click that guy and call it shadow caster um, and come down here and uh, my light options. And I'm just going to turn my, uh, my intensity down quite a bit. And then over in my regular light, I'll do the same. And you just gotta find a nice balance between stuff. Um, so for this one, actually it might be better if we switch it to parallel. Yeah, so actually switch your uh, shadow caster to parallel, um, just so it's only gonna come from that angle. And as you can see, now we have some nice color contrast between things, um, and that was pretty good. So my settings are 30 for my shadow caster. And on my ambient fill light, I'm gonna actually call this fill light. I put it to 66 um, and that pretty much brought back to the color we were originally at. So there might be a little bit of color difference, but I'm not going to worry it for worry about it for right now. So now uh, it's going to fold up together like this and we get some shadows and it puts itself together. So that looks good. Um, but I think as we're coming into the scene, we're going to want to see a little bit of like bend already. So just go to the frame zero on your timeline, go up into your top view here. And let's just add a little bit of rotation to everything. So I'm just going to rotate this guy a little bit. I'll rotate this one to negative 15. That means I will rotate the other side to 15. Or this would actually be to 30. Um, like that. And then this one would be negative 30. So it's basically in a crooked straight line. Or like it's in the same line. And then so this side would be 15. And this side would be uh, negative 30. And there we go. So it's like on the same plane still. Just keep your rotations nice and easy. So I'm actually going to grab this uh, shadow caster and the fill light and just set the shy button on and just shy these so they're not in our way anymore. And I may as well do that for the background layer. So they're just out of our timeline but still in the scene. So let's go back into our active camera here. And uh, now as the scene starts, it's going to be all crinkled and flatten out. So I think that gives us an opportunity. Remember how we set that position keyframe to actually go back in time and just on your layer control, move this position 
um, over to the left um, or right or top or bottom, wherever you want. And just so when it slides in, it's going to kind of be folded up and like unfold for a second. So people will get an idea that it, there's more to it than just a flat layer. And then I'm going to move these uh, rotations uh, forward about halfway just so they don't unfold right away. So there we go. So that looks cool. Um, let's see. I'm just going to do a quick preview. Um, and see that that is all working pretty well and it looks like it's looking pretty nice so far So that's gonna be some action there and then it's gonna fold up and then we'll have it transition to the next part So I'll just do end to set my work area there and now let's import another thing So I'm gonna do command I on my keyboard go to my map graphics one do composition retain layer sizes and say open and now I'm going to just double click into my map graphic actually um, so right at one second all right so at one second I'm gonna want my boat to start doing something so I'm just going to grab my boat layer here that's why we separated it up press P to bring up my position properties and set P for position and then go forward to let's go to my map cuts we started to bend right around four, uh, four seconds and 15 frames. So I'm going to just make it so it reaches its destination, which is this little cove here at four minutes and 15 seconds um, or wherever, just after four seconds, and then go backwards in time and just drag this, uh, I don't know, like off over here so it's gonna come in here and grab those two layers and set your easing to sign so it's nice and slow and smooth and duplicate your map background command D and put this above your boat layer and just call this boat alpha cut. Um, I love alpha mats if you guys didn't know that so I'm gonna set this as an alpha mat just so it's, it looks like it'll like come in from out like be, um, behind the border or something and settle in this wonderful cove and I guess what I should also do is press R on my keyboard for my rotation property of this boat and uh, let's add a quick expression so I'm gonna type in wiggle uh, I'm gonna set it to actually I should also put my move anchor point for this at the bottom so I'm just gonna click this bottom here and uh, now I'm going to add a little expression here. So I'm going to say uh, two, uh, actually I'm going to say 20 and two. Um, I think these are going to be good settings. Let me just double check. That wiggles quite a bit and that does not look good. Um, this might be nuts. All right, so that spins way too much. So uh, we don't want that. We want every... We want it to spin, uh, let's call it like 30 degrees. Oh yeah, I should have probably explained this. So this side is degrees and this side is how many times per second. Um, so every, I'm gonna say every five times a second, it's going to move 30 degrees back and forth, um, which actually is bad. So I'm actually gonna set this to one. And what this is gonna do is just give us a nice like natural wiggle to our boat, like it's stuck in the water or something. Um, and then I'm actually going to go and set this to, whoa, um, set this to two, and I'm gonna set this one to something more subtle, to like 15. So two ever, so uh, two times a second, it's going to move 15 degrees on its uh, anchor point, which is at the bottom of this boat. So now it's just gonna keep moving a little bit. It's nice and random. It doesn't look that good, but actually, I'm still not happy with this. So I'm gonna set this to 0.5. Maybe it needs to be way more subtle. Well, now we can't even notice, uh, but you guys know what's there. So I guess that's what matters. All right, so now we got this little animated scene. You could animate more if you want and don't change the position of the background. Uh, anything else is totally cool though. So let's go back into our map cuts and actually close our map graphics because we don't need it. And now this is the super easy trick. So remember how we had everything flat at one point? So right between one second and four seconds. What we're gonna do is grab our map graphic and put it um, beneath one of our layers. So in this case, it's going to be our, uh, let me just make sure, um, beneath our map or our one layer. And so what we're gonna do is parent, first make it a 3D layer. Next, set your track mat to alpha mat, which I love, of course. And so now it's going to be able to be seen through the layer above it and set your parent to the layer one. So now what this is going to do is it's going to make that layer rotate with our other layer just like this. So that is pretty cool. Actually what I'm going to do is we're having these little lines in between our uh, 
our thing here. So just move everything over one frame. Um, so like this one, I will just uh, make sure you're, you're flat when you do this and just press over just to move it over one frame. And then I will move this one over one frame, this one over one frame, and then this one over one frame. And now all of our lines are gone and it's gonna be hardly noticeable. So now I'll turn back on that layer and we can see that it's there. So I'm just gonna do Command D to copy this layer and uh, After Effects is smart, so it's gonna put it above my next one. And then I'll just parent this to the layer two and unclick this layer, so now it's there. Do Command D and after effects is smart so it's, it'll put it under three so just hide three and parent this to three command d and uh unclick four and parent that one to four and command d and parent this one to five and unclick five so now we have our wonderful scene uh animated on all these split layers so as it bends we're still going to get those shadows and the scene is still going to be moving. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you guys want, you can stop the video here, but I have more to show you, believe it or not. So we now have this. Come on. Uh, we have our wonderful, crazy party island. Come on here. And our boat comes out of nowhere and is like, hey, I heard there was a party and I love your trees. And he settles in this cove and the party starts. Uh, and I guess while he's on this island, he wants to take a picture. So this next scene is going to be a picture. So what we're going to do is just go forward until all your keyframes are settled, like right about here. And what we're going to do is grab our scene, our map graphic um, five and our layer five and do command D on your keyboard to duplicate them and then do alt back bracket to cut them and then go forward to all your other layers here and do alt forward bracket to cut those. Um, and then actually zoom in cause it always misses one frame and then just fix it. So it's like hardly noticeable that those switch. Oh, that's actually incredibly noticeable. I think I cut the wrong layer. So I'm actually going to do command Z a couple times and uh, command Z to not duplicate that one. Which layer do we need? I want this side over here. So that's actually going to be uh, layer one and map graphic one I want because if you pay attention to the motion, it's going to flip and close and then that top one is the one I want to duplicate. So I'm actually going to grab those layers and do command D to duplicate them and drag them above everything. Then do alt back bracket and grab all my other layers here and do alt forward back to cut it, zoom in and just delete that one keyframe like that. So now it's not noticeable that it switches. Um, okay so we are getting there and we're almost to the cool stuff I hope. Uh, so now what we're going to do is now I just got to think because I ran out of ideas on what I was supposed to be doing at this current moment. Uh, so I'm probably going to actually make all these colors different just because I'm losing track of what's what. So I made those all blue and I'm going to make my new ones for the second section yellow. Um, I said yellow, but I clicked aqua. There we go. I can definitely tell the difference now, which is fantastic. Uh, so it switches. Um, I actually want it to switch faster, so I'm going to drag my yellow layers over a bit um, and then just grab these uh, layers underneath it and do alt forward bracket and zoom in and I guess I will just move. Um, yeah, that actually cut perfect. Nice. So I mean there's a little jump, you can fix that more if you want. You really can. I've said that in other videos and not shown you, but this is actually pretty easy if you want to get it way better. So there we go. We have uh, this uh, set up and uh, now obviously we need to do a little bit more uh, to flip to our next one. So first what we're going to do is duplicate this map graphic in this layer 6 one more time. So do command D. And what we're going to do is press U to bring up the properties on here and just delete all of them. And then delete your map graphic uh, 7. Um, so now we are actually back to this wonderful little mat. So let's do command I on our keyboard and import our map graphics 2 as a composition and retain layer sizes and say open put your map graphics to um, beneath your seven layer and just set this to an alpha mat. And uh, now it's going to pop up on that new area and uh, click this since it's too long for this, uh, go and click your top layer here and press I to go to your endpoint and alt and then select your map graphics two layer we just dropped in and do alt back bracket, back bracket to cut it and then go and set this to a 3D layer like that and then parent this to your layer seven. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, I promise we're almost done. 
All right, so now we need to rotate uh, this layer. Uh, this I should make this another fancy color. So I'll actually make this one I'm talking about now green so we can really see. Um, so now we need to take this green layer and flip it over um, to the other side. So what we're gonna do with that um, our rotation point is right here on it. So all we're gonna do is press R for our rotation and uh, set a keyframe right here for our rotation and just go forward in time to maybe eight seconds and just have this uh, flip uh, over to zero degrees here, just like that. So now it has opened fully and I wanna make sure this rotation, actually I'll set this, uh, this uh, rotation for seven to 180 just so it's completely flat. Um, all right, so now it looks like it opens, which is good, but we don't have the right content on here. So I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but I found a way that worked pretty well for me. Um, I just went forward in time to uh, when this was at uh, roughly uh, 90 degrees on my timeline. So 88.5, I might even zoom in and try to get closer. Yeah, so right here, um, it is it is like vertical and you can't really see what the graphic is. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this layer, these green layers and do alt forward bracket to cut them and then duplicate the layers and do alt uh, back bracket to cut them again. And then we'll just do our sneaky little trick to fix this. I'll make those layers longer. Um, so now we have another duplicated copy and I'll make this one peach. And so now um, it's going to, once again, not really be noticeable when those two layers switch, um, but they do, of course. So our first thing to do is um, to delete this map graphic seven, which is the content here. So delete that. I hope that was the right one. Uh, yeah, so delete that map graphic and just grab your uh, map graphic two, our second one, do command D on your keyboard to duplicate that and drag this down beneath your other peach layer like this and press I on your keyboard on your peach layer, grab this layer and do alt back bracket. I hope I'm explaining this well. I'm trying guys, I promise. Um, and go forward in time um, and press U on your keyboard or P to make sure your position is right. And what we're gonna have to do is just zero out our Z axis here. So just press zero um, and now it's on the right plane and we'll also do this to our other one. It imported at 25.4, so I'll set this one to zero as well. And now all we're gonna have to do is parent once it's flat, so once it's at zero and 180 degrees, so totally flat, we're just gonna parent this map graphics three to our other peach layer. And now when it flips, it should move, if I did this right, with our content. So it flips like this, which is perfect. Um, and it looks pretty nice. So let's see. Yeah, so this is set up right. Um, what we might do is, um, I'm just gonna take a quick look at this crap and make sure we're not having any funny issues. Um, 37.5. All right, so um, on this number right here, actually, you know what, this is close enough to being good. So there we go, we have welcome to party land, um, and that was pretty easy. Uh, so we have it come on the screen like this, and then we have it flip open to some new content, which I think is a very nice looking effect and it's totally cool. So uh, let's unshy all of our layers, grab them all with command A and do shift command C to pre-compose them. Actually grab all your layers and shift command C to pre-compose them. Call this layer map and press okay. Now we have a nice map layer. Um, and now what we're gonna do is duplicate this map layer to command D on your keyboard and go up into your effects and presets and just grab a fill um, and the reason I'm doing this instead of the drop shadow is the drop shadow seems to affect these 3D layers funny. So I'm gonna put a fill onto this map too and just make this color black or dark graphite and then uh, just press uh, P on my keyboard for position actually and make this a 3D layer and just put this uh, backwards like two points and then move it over a little bit, um, down a little bit and over a little bit like this and then T for opacity and turn this opacity down a lot to something like this. And uh, 
there we go. We basically have this all together. So now we have this map that comes on the screen, um, flattens out, and we have a nice little little shadow and stuff going on in here. And then we have a crazy boat that seems to be a little drunk coming onto the, this uh, little cove here and settling in. Uh, whoever's on the boat um, makes it into these wonderful wood of wonderful trees, hops out and takes a sweet picture that they send home in a postcard. And that's my story for today. Uh, so yeah, that's what I went with. But as you can see, it's still kind of rocking back and forth and you could animate way more and you can use this effect um, to do like so many other cool transitions. So now it's going to open to our new content. Um, and there we go, welcome to party land. And I think that looks pretty dang cool. Um, I don't know how long this video took. Thanks for sticking with it. I'm sorry if I was crazy and talking too much today. But yeah, this was Matt from Mount Mograph. And as always guys, get your learn on and peace out. Thanks for checking out the channel, you guys rock.